Today is Tuesday, July 9th. We're talking about new subpoenas surrounding President Trump, the flooding that hit the nation's capital, and why you may want to look up tonight. Plus, what to know about an Amazon strike, a new Google coding program, and Stranger Things 3. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. We start with two new developments when it comes to President Trump's financial records. First, Reuters reports House Democrats are one step closer now to getting their hands on President Trump's tax returns, at least some of them. That's because New York's governor just signed a bill that requires officials to share the president's state tax returns when Congress asks for them. And Democrats in the House will likely ask to see them. To be clear, a House committee sued the IRS for not providing Trump's federal tax returns, which are not covered in this new bill. So expect this fight to continue. Even the new bill in New York will likely face some legal challenges. Republicans call it purely political. Democrats say no one is above the law. At the same time, congressional Democrats have issued dozens of new subpoenas for President Trump's financial records, 37 subpoenas to be exact. This time, it's about his businesses and an ongoing lawsuit. The Washington Post says President Trump is accused of violating the Constitution's ban on gifts or payments from foreign governments through his business dealings. The Trump administration, though, is fighting this. Stay tuned. A billionaire linked to presidents and celebrities is now charged with new federal sex trafficking charges, and he's in jail while he waits for the next step in his case. Prosecutors say Jeffrey Epstein lured young girls to luxury homes and paid them for sex acts. He pleaded not guilty yesterday. The Wall Street Journal says he's been linked to well-known people, including President Trump and former President Clinton. Although none of those people were mentioned in any indictment or linked to his actual crimes. ABC News reports the 66-year-old investment manager was involved in a federal investigation more than a decade ago, but it ended with a secret plea deal that some say let him off too easy. His defense says the new case is just an improper redo, but prosecutors say they found evidence of new conduct that was not covered in that first case. For the first time in a while, the pool of presidential hopefuls just got smaller. Congressman Eric Swalwell is the first to drop out of the 2020 race since January. You may have seen him if you watched the first Democratic presidential debate last month. But overall, CNN says he's struggled to get attention in the crowded field and never got more than 1 percent in national polling. Speaking of debates, the second debate is happening later this month on CNN. So CNN says it'll hold a live draw on TV next week on July 18th. That will decide which candidates will debate on which night, since it's another two-night event. NBC did something similar last time, but it was behind closed doors. The nation's capital and surrounding areas were hit with a flash flooding emergency yesterday. Washington, D.C. saw three to four inches of rain in just one hour. And the Weather Channel says that's almost as much as D.C. typically gets in a month. Parts of Virginia got three inches of rain in an hour, which broke a 60-year record. It prompted a bunch of water rescues and stranded cars. NBC News says it even caused some flooding in buildings, including the basement of the White House, although it was cleaned up pretty quickly. The good news now? AccuWeather says the Northeast will get a much-needed break from severe weather and high humidity today and tomorrow. It should be sunny and dry in most places. As for later this week, there's a chance a tropical depression will form in the Gulf of Mexico, and it could turn into a stronger tropical storm, bringing some flooding and heavy rain to parts of the south, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. Look up tonight. You may get a glimpse of Saturn. It's supposed to be the brightest Saturn will be this year and the closest it'll get to the Earth in 2019. USA Today reports the planet is at opposition tonight, meaning Saturn and the Sun are on opposite sides of the Earth. So you'll be able to see the planet with the naked eye all night long. Although AccuWeather says you'll still need a telescope to see Saturn's famous rings. If you do miss it tonight, don't worry, you'll still likely be able to see Saturn for the rest of the summer. All right, more news ahead, but first, thanks to today's sponsor, Babbel the language learning app that will get you speaking a new language with confidence. I wish I had Babbel back when I was learning Spanish in high school because maybe I would have actually stuck with it. And it's not just Spanish you can choose from. Babbel offers 14 different languages. 
We're all busy, so I love that Babbel makes it easy to get started, and then you can do just a little at a time. Lessons are broken up into just 10 to 15 minutes, so you can actually fit learning a new language into your day, into your schedule, wherever you are, and you can sync the lessons across all of your devices. Babbel is designed to quickly get you speaking that language within weeks. Its teaching method has been proven effective across multiple studies. In fact, it's the number one selling language learning app in the world. So go ahead and give it a try. And right now you can try for free. Just go to Babbel.com or download the app to try Babbel for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com or download the app to try Babbel for free and start speaking that new language with confidence. Now back to the news. What's being called Coco Goff's magical run at Wimbledon is now over. The 15-year-old tennis player became the youngest person to make it this far in Wimbledon since 1991, and she even beat her idol, Venus Williams, in a match last week. But she lost yesterday. ESPN reports she lost to Romanian tennis star Simona Halep. Still, Goff has plenty of new fans, including tennis legend Billie Jean King, who tweeted, quote, Your journey is far from over. The numbers are in. An average of 14 million people watched the Women's World Cup final on Sunday with a peak of nearly 20 million viewers. That makes it one of the most watched soccer games in U.S. history. Team USA beat the Netherlands on Sunday for its second World Cup title in a row. Fox Sports says this year's final even had more U.S. viewers than last year's men's World Cup final between France and Croatia. But it still fell short of the women's victory back in 2015 when Team USA beat Japan and 25 million Americans tuned in. Though it's worth noting that game was in prime time, while this year it was on a Sunday morning. Either way, both women's victories are some of the most watched soccer in U.S. history. Some Amazon employees are planning to strike on the company's biggest day for sales. Bloomberg reports warehouse employees in Minnesota are planning to strike for six hours on July 15th. That's the first day of what's known as Prime Day, when a bunch of deals and discounts are offered online. The workers say they want less demanding deadlines and more permanent jobs. Amazon has faced some criticism about worker conditions in the past, but the company says it already offers workers excellent pay and opportunities. The company recently raised its minimum pay to $15 an hour. Engadget says the strike likely won't affect Prime Day too much since it's happening at only one of Amazon's 100 warehouses. But it's still bad PR on the day that typically brings in record sales for the company. Instagram wants to do more to stop online bullying, so it came up with two new features. TechCrunch says the first one uses artificial intelligence to flag comments that may be considered offensive. Users are then asked, are you sure you want to post this? Early tests apparently show the feature works, that some users will actually change their minds when given a chance to rethink their posts. The second feature is called Restrict. It's basically another version of blocking or muting someone without them knowing. The Verge reports when you choose to restrict another user, they'll still be able to see your posts, but they won't be able to see when you're online or if you've read their messages. And if the restricted user comments on your photo, you can approve or delete it before anyone else can see. That person won't know the difference. Instagram hopes these features will make it harder for a bully to find and harass others. They should roll out to most users by the end of the year. U.S. students can now learn how to code in school for free, thanks to a new program from Google. Engadget says it's called Code with Google, and it offers free coding curriculum that teachers then can use to introduce students to the basics of coding. In a blog post, Google talks about how important computer science is in education and that the limited hands-on programming available for students is really only in wealthy school districts. So this program is at least meant to help bridge that gap in computer science education. On top of the free resources, TechCrunch says Google also announced a $1 million grant to the Computer Science Teachers Association. Netflix says Stranger Things 3 broke its four-day record. Nearly 41 million households have now watched the third season of the series. That's more than any other film or series in the first four days on Netflix. And that's it for today. You're ready to go. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks to everyone who messaged me to let me know you voted for the Newsworthy for the People's Choice Podcast Awards at podcastawards.com. I'm so grateful for your support. And if you still want to vote and haven't yet, just go to podcastawards.com and choose the Newsworthy under two categories, People's Choice and Politics and News. All right, as always, you can read more about any of the news stories we talked about today. Just look for the links in today's episode description in your podcast app. 
The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by 4 in the morning. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day. 